Okay, um, well, welcome everyone to the Tuckahoe Drive traffic calming meeting. Um, this is March 27th, 6.30 p.m. We are here at Brooks Memorial Fellowship Hall. Um, thank you very much for offering your space. Really appreciate it. Um, and we're also here virtually and the recording of this meeting will be posted to YouTube sometime in the next few days. Um, my name is David Greaves. I'm with NDOT. This is Abigail. Um, Abigail's helping me uh, run the virtual portion of the meeting while, while I do the, the slides up here. Um, so the first thing we want to talk about is just sort of what is traffic calming in general, and then we'll move on to what we're looking at for Tuckahoe Drive specifically, and then we can um, at the end talk about how projects like these get uh, balloted or, or voted on, and then ultimately how they get built. Um, so the traffic calming program is for residential streets, uh, so not you know larger collectors or arterials like Brick Church Pike, but ones where you have houses that folks are living on. Um, we rely heavily on physical solutions. Um, that means uh, speed bumps for the most part. Um, we also do some signing and some striping, but uh, things that will physically interrupt speeding is, is usually the preferred approach NDOT likes to take. And then the primary goal of the program is speed reduction. Um, that really is just a, a concern of safety and having a good environment for all of our neighborhoods to enjoy. There are three E's of traffic calming. Those are education, enforcement, and engineering. Um, education is kind of like what we're doing here now, just talking about traffic calming, uh, speeding, um, you know, communicating ways and, and reasons why driving safely is um, appropriate. Enforcement is, you know, speeding tickets. That's uh, entirely within Metro Nashville Police Department's court. And then engineering is the part that NDOT is really um, able to control. They uh, are responsible for the roadways and the paving and the design of all of these things. And um, we're here to propose an engineered solution to um, a speeding problem. <laughs> this is all part of the safety and vision zero program under NDOT. Uh, vision zero for anyone who doesn't know is an initiative that seeks to achieve zero injuries and fatalities on Nashville's roadways. Um, basically, there's no goal that's higher than that that we would rather have. So zero is sort of the, um, you know, the ultimate vision that, that this program seeks to contribute to. The chart we're looking at here is an infographic um, that demonstrates why speed is <clears throat> such an important part um, of Vision Zero. And if you can't read, it's a little bit small, and I understand that uh, we, we couldn't quite get our projector far enough away. But what this says is, um, if a person is hit by a car going at 25 miles an hour, they have an 89% chance of survival. Unfortunately, as those speeds of cars go up, the chance of survival goes way down. So at that 45 mile an hour range, um, it's really only like a third chance that, that you'd make it out of there. And that's just, um, you know, we don't want people walking around um, and mixing with cars that are going, you know, really fast like that just for safety reasons. This is a really popular program in Nashville. So uh, every one of those tiny purple lines on the map of Davidson County, that's a street that is applied for traffic calming. So it's, um, it's, it's really uh, quite a lot of streets want the treatments that we're proposing here. Um, when Tuckahoe Drive was selected, there were over 500 streets in the application pool that had um, applied. So we did choose 85 neighborhoods in the summer of 2023. 20, um, that was exciting for us. We're, we're usually in the neighborhood of 25 projects every six months or so, um, but 85 was a, a nice spike. Um, so we were able to, to do a lot more projects through this program. Um, but ultimately, I mean, the message here is that, that y'all are one of a, a small group that was selected out of the, the number of streets that do want it. Um, so there are a few things that traffic calming um, can do in, in our kind of toolbox or list of options. There are all kinds of things that um, are better suited for other departments or other parts of NDOT that do different project types. Um, so things like adding stop signs and sidewalks, um, bikeways, those are all things that we can communicate to NDOT through Hub Nashville. Um, we're happy to help with that, but just wanna make sure everyone's aware, um, traffic calming is a pretty specific project type um, and, and we'll 
we'll help direct any requests that don't fit into that. But um, this is a good resource for just about any government interaction. Um, and there's an app, a phone number, et cetera. Uh, so how did Tuckahoe Drive get chosen? Um, we have a highly data-driven approach. So when a street applies, what we do is we um, go count the speeds that cars are doing and how many cars are going by. Uh, those are those red and blue pieces of the pie. So speed is that big 45% number. We weigh that the most heavily because ultimately that's what creates the most danger for pedestrians and, and, and folks that are living on the street. Um, volume, that's how many cars are going by every day. Um, if you have, you know, one car that goes 50 miles an hour, that's not as bad as 100 cars that go 50 miles an hour. So we weigh that pretty heavily as well. Uh, those other three pieces, vulnerable injure, injury or fatality, um, that's if a pedestrian was was hit by a car. We want to make sure that if that has already happened, we're paying special attention to those streets. Um, and then the non-driver accommodations and trip destinations, um, that basically is asking, do you have sidewalks already? And if you do, it actually hurts the scoring a little bit because, um, you know, at least people have somewhere to walk. If uh, you don't have a sidewalk, we want to make sure to account for the fact that people are going to be walking in the street and we need to make sure that they're going to be safe. And then trip destinations, those are mainly parks and, and schools. We know that those two uses generate a lot of walking trips relative to other buildings. Um, so we, we throw that in there as well to adjust the scores accordingly. Um, some data about Tuckahoe Drive specifically. Um, the 85th percent speed that was measured was 37 miles an hour. That's that's pretty fast for streets like these. Um, the 85th percent speed, for anyone who doesn't know, it's kind of like the median, where a median would be a 50 percent. Um, 85th percent just means that 85 out of 100 people are going slower than that number, and, and 15 out of 100 are actually going faster. So it works sort of like an average, but it's not as easily um, skewed up and down. Um, one thing to note is this street is really wide. 38 feet is uh, is quite a bit bigger than than most residential streets, and that's something that can affect speeds as well. Um, and then the volume of 1,500 vehicles per day, that's pretty normal for a street like yours. Um, I don't expect there's a lot of people using Tuckahoe Drive as like a cut through, um, but it is it is a pretty substantial number of, of vehicles. I mean, you can imagine. It is it it is yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that as well. And and we can actually take a look at this uh, this map here. So this is from NDOT's Traffic Calming Tracker. Um, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> you can tell I'm a little raspy tonight. Um, the posted speed, I believe it is 25. Oh, 35? What? Um, yeah, I can follow up. I think whether it's 25 or 30 um, doesn't really affect the, the proposed plan that we have, uh, but it is good to know just for, for context. Um, this is a traffic calming tracker. So it's on NDOT's website and, and we've got a link at the end of the slideshow that can direct you to this but it shows all the streets that have been completed um, as well as ones who have been chosen and ones that have applied. So because Tuckahoe Drive here is in green, that means uh, we're working on it. So we're here in the meeting, um, working on a design and it's not yet gonna uh, be in the construction queue. The blue dashed lines are projects that have already uh, taken place. So as I'm sure all of you are aware, there are speed bumps already on um, that first section of Tuckahoe as you get out to Dickerson Pike but not in the, you know, the neighborhood portion of it. Um, the next part of the presentation, we're going to zoom into some of the different tools we have, but I wanted to pause and make sure um, if anyone has questions about what we've covered already, now's a good time to ask. And I just want to add, um, yes. How 
Um, so that's one of the things that we can do. Um, we've also got a number of other things. Um, I, I can move on to that now if, if, if we're good to go. Um, so NDOT's primary tool are the speed cushions that, um, that are already on that first section of Tuckahoe. So this should be a fairly familiar strategy. I think that these would be a pretty good fit for Tuckahoe as well. Um, it's, it's something that a lot of people in Nashville are, are used to by now. And they do actually do a really good job at slowing speeds. Um, unlike signs that, that kind of flash how quickly you're going or, or striping, um, they can't easily be ignored by, by folks that you know, would, would prefer to, to break the rules. Um, they're about three inches high, which is a little bit surprising to, to some. They're six feet wide. Uh, that's because um, we want them to be wide enough that regular vehicles, cars, trucks, and things um, you know, need to maneuver over them. But we want to also reduce the impact that we have to um, emergency vehicles. So the thought with six feet wide is it's kind of a happy middle ground where they're wide enough to affect cars, but um, the larger vehicles like fire trucks um, have an easier time getting over them than, than a smaller like sedan or something. Uh, similar to speed cushions, we have speed tables. These work the exact same way. Um, they're just larger, they're a little bit longer, and they do stretch across the entire road. Um, we prefer not to use these in most cases because of the emergency vehicle impact I talked about earlier. There are um, certain instances where they are a good idea. Um, sometimes streets are like a really weird width and cushions just won't work very well. Um, but we don't, we don't tend to default to them uh, just because uh, they work a little bit differently. Um, I mentioned that we know that they work. So NDOT actually verified kind of the national research on speed cushions by doing their own study before and after of six different locations all around Nashville. Um, and they saw pretty encouraging results. Uh, the average speed went down from 33 to 22. And the 85th speed, like I discussed earlier, that went down all the way from 37 to 25. So they were really encouraged to see that, um, you know, all this work they're doing has not been for nothing. Uh, the intended results are, are being observed, which is encouraging. Like we mentioned earlier, uh, radar feedback signs. These are signs that tell you how fast you're supposed to be going on top. That's the white part. And then how fast you are going. Uh, that'll take your speed with radar and flash it back at you. Um, there's no cameras. It's not going to give you a ticket or anything. Um, but, but it is helpful if, say, you were speeding down a hill and you didn't really want to be going that fast. Um, it's easy to, to go faster than you intend. So in instances where we think, um, you know, they might help a driver who may be speeding erroneously, but not on purpose, um, they, can, they can be good. We also like to use them in spots where speed cushions can't work due to um, like curves in the road or perhaps hills that are too steep for speed cushions to go on. Um, they're a nice supplement to a, a traffic calming design in certain instances, but we, we try not to use them as our, our primary tool for speed reduction. Um, even more specifically, we can sometimes narrow the road with pavement markings. Um, so on a really wide street, such as Tuckahoe Drive, um, sometimes we feel like it may be worthwhile to just paint edge lines on the road and make those lanes a little bit narrower. Um, that can slow vehicles just sort of by psychologically creating a tighter space for them to be in. Um, of course, you're still able to drive over the white line, so it doesn't physically affect cars in any way, but um, there is some speed reduction that can be achieved that way as well. And then we also have um, some more specialty treatments like bulb outs and chicanes. A bulb out is where you um, kind of do the same thing as white edge lines, but at intersections. Um, so if you have a really large intersection where it's easy to make wide kind of fast turns, if you tighten that up and sort of shrink it into the middle, um, the smaller the space an intersection takes up, the slower a car is able to maneuver through it. And as an added bonus, the less space a pedestrian has to cross the road if they're crossing the street. Um, so we like to use bulb outs in intersections that are really large, um, particularly if anyone um, is aware that a particular intersection is, is more dangerous than another one. Um, chicanes is where we take a really wide road and kind of zigzag it back and forth. Um, this can be really effective because 
uh, rather than having a straight shot that you're able to kind of just hit the gas and go quickly on, you're forced to maneuver around more in a zigzag pattern. Um, and, and that will slow vehicles quite a bit. The one downside of chicanes is that um, often you're sacrificing at least half of the parallel parking on a street. Um, so we will do them in streets where uh, it doesn't seem like that's going to be an issue, like if folks aren't parking on the street. We try to avoid it if anyone is going to lose a parking space that they you know, rely on day to day. Uh, so we may consider that, but it's, um, th there are also reasons that we you know, don't prefer it as well. And then finally, we have traffic circles. Um, so in intersections that are even bigger than bulb outs are appropriate for, we can put a circle in the middle of an intersection and that forces drivers to go kind of left around it. It works kind of like a chicane rather than just blowing straight through, you have to kind of maneuver around an object and that'll slow speeds as well. I'm not sure if there, that there are any intersections on Tuckahoe Drive that are quite large enough to have these work. Um, but we have bulb outs as well as an option that um, can address intersection safety if, if necessary. Mm -hmm. Every intersection for streets they do the yeah. Oh, got it. Well, that sounds very uh, disruptive and, and yeah. not ideal for obvious reasons. Um, well, that's a good place to kind of lead into um, looking at the concept. I do want to take any questions about the tools we covered, or I can just kind of explain what we've got going on here up on the screen. Okay. Um, so yeah, like I mentioned, we got three sets of speed cushions proposed. Um, those are about the same spacing as the ones that exist already. Um, we showed the entire map because actually the entire street applied for traffic calming, but we didn't want to add cushions to a, an existing design. So we're mainly focused on this area um, from Belshire up to Pineview. We did notice that Belshire Terrace was a pretty um, large intersection. We've heard that uh, folks are doing donuts in there. Um, so we are proposing bulb outs there because it, it feels like that may be an issue y'all are dealing with and something that might help. Um, but I think I heard uh, that that complaint applied to other intersections. Um, I want to just pause and clarify, are there any other places that y'all think bulb outs would, would be of a help? Got it. Oh, okay. So that's between Belcher Drive and Belcher Terrace. Um, yeah, so I think that this here is Belcher Terrace. That must be the view. Okay. Oh, like this one. Oh, okay, cool. So, so, sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, yeah, so we, we've got no problem doing the same thing here as well. It sounds like the same problem is there. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll zoom into these a little bit more because uh, it sounds like they'll definitely be part of the design. So, what we have here is we'll stripe out that smaller area and take it down to basically like the minimum that a normal intersection would be. 
uh, in addition to the striping, we have delineators that kind of um, fence that spot off. Um, are, are those, how, how do folks feel about those kind of white posts along those corners? I see. Yes. Well, so. Mm -hmm. I see. Oh, uh, I, th I think I see what you're saying. Um, but to just make sure. That's what we need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing these as well. So on the concept, um, these yellow trapezoids, that C is for speed cushion. And that's going to look like uh, th these here. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, okay, so it sounds as if we we do not like the the flexible delineators. Those are the white sticks. Um, something that NDOT is experimenting with is. Um, doing that same striping in the intersections to make it smaller, but instead of the flexible delineators, um, placing like a speed bump kind of across diagonally, that would that would provide kind of a a bump if you were to drive over it. It's not gonna, you know, break and, and become trash. Um, that's something we can look into as well. Um, I don't in this slideshow, but um, if you can picture, if you can bear with me, where the second white delineator is, mm -hmm. just imagine um, a black and white speed bump about six, six feet long, it's kind of extending this way. So if you did try to like cut this corner really fast, you would, you would hit that and it would, it would feel like you were going over a speed bump like you might in a grocery store parking lot. Um, it sounded as if we were interested in in both Belcher Terrace Drive and, and Ewing Drive. Um, we don't have to have them at stop only intersections um, because they are kind of outside of where people should be traveling. Um, it's it's really just where kind of the the parking lane basically. Um, any other questions about what we're we're seeing here. Are you saying that that you want to divide the street? Um, so why are people a lot of times from coming in or going from oh it's somebody that's closer to the plane of mind than where they should be? Oh, I see. Um yeah. I think so. Are you referring to the part that's kind of around that bend in yeah, in Tuckahoe? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, it, it sounds like you're you're suggesting that we we would consider the like double solid yellow line that just goes right down the middle. Um, I can look into that. It's not typically something that we do. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I see. You just kind of have to make an acknowledgement of where the place is, the wide street, and then, you know, person coming up, coming in this side, and person going out on this side. And when you get to that point, they're more on your side than they are on their own side. So that could cause an accident because somebody's going to be speeding a little bit. You know, going a little faster, and by the time they get to you, there's a situation. Yeah. Because they speed. Mm -hmm. the, the speed table will slow back. Oh, right. Turn off the bill turn. Right. Yes. Yeah. So anything that Right. Yeah, I, I think that we can we can definitely make that work. So so Belshard Drive as well as an intersection that, that we probably need to do something to slow vehicles that they're okay, cool. Um well that that sounds good. We can take a look at that as well and, and just take the same approach that we're doing on those other two intersections. Awesome. Um, well, we can move on to talking about sort of the next steps in the program. Okay, um, and then we'll be happy to stay around for any questions that that come up toward the end of the meeting as well. Um, I'm so glad you asked. That is uh, this this slide here. Um, so for anyone who can't read the um, small smaller text size, I'll just sort of talk us through it, but. Um, this is a flow chart of the program. It starts with application, uh, prioritization, and selection. That's where we analyze the data and choose which streets get chosen. We are at the red circle neighborhood meeting. Yep. Um, and the next step is is design. So we're getting your feedback. We obviously have some um, yeah ideas to incorporate to our final plans. Um, but then once those are ready, we can do one of two things. We can have a second neighborhood meeting um, where we Kind of review the program information again, look at a more detailed uh, version of what we've produced. We can also post those plans um, online and, and begin the balloting process. And then um, once a project goes through balloting, uh, if it passes, it'll be put into the, the construction queue. Um, in the top left of each of these circles is like a really rough time frame. Um, so at the design circle, we've got about two months. Um, that, that's probably about right for, for this. We may be able to do it a little bit faster, but we've got some, um, you know, some pretty real design to do on those intersections like we talked about. Um, the balloting process usually takes about two months. The reason for that is uh, we leave it open for six weeks. We want to make sure that everyone has plenty of time to get our postcards and then, um, you know, when they have the opportunity call into NDOT or log online and, and submit your vote. Uh, that's voting yes or no. So if you want the project to move forward, if you like what you see, you vote yes. And if you you prefer not to have the project, you can vote no. Um, yes. That's correct. Um, so this here is the ballot zone. Um, essentially, it's every property owner with um, a line that abuts the, the right of way. Um, so we use Metro Nashville's like mailing list generator to send out those notifications. Yes. Um, so I see a lot of things on So you recognize not the purpose. That's correct. Um, yeah. I don't know the like real legal reason for it, but essentially the process that this program um, was created under was reviewed by Metro Legal, and they wanted to make absolutely sure that these projects were not able to be, um, you know, removed by like unhappy property owners. So, um, 
that's that. Um, speaking of the, the ballots, there are going to be postcards sent to those um, mailing addresses that we're able to pull. So that's what these, these look like. Um, it's basically a little piece of paper. It'll have um, the QR code and some instructions on the ballot um, instructing people how to go online and vote. Um, yes. It will be, that's correct. Um, whatever they have listed in um, like Metro's public records where they can be contacted, that's where we send them. Um, like I mentioned, voting is open for six weeks, um, yes or no, and a project will move forward if two thirds of those who do vote, um, vote yes. So it's not 66% of every property, um, it's just of all the votes, um, you know, did two thirds vote in favor. Yeah. Yeah, so you don't have to have a Tuckahoe Drive address. Um, so if you were on like a corner, um, okay. Do, if your property does not actually like touch Tuckahoe Drive, um, you wouldn't be in the, the list of, of eligible voters. But if you look at some sort of common on Saturday, would you have to go? So we do these like one street at a time. Uh, so tonight we're talking about Tuckahoe, but Pineview, if, if they're interested, um, can also apply. Yeah, understood. Um, we only had Tuckahoe itself apply to the, the program. So we went out and collected data on them. And, and we know that, um, you know, based on our observations, y'all could benefit from a speed reduction project. Um, we would definitely encourage other streets in the neighborhood if they'd like to apply to, to do so. And then we'll do that same, same process for them. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. At the, the initial application, mm -hmm. uh, but because of the impact of the fee, once you get a, that, you know, put the traffic calming on one street, then people might avoid that street and yeah. the other street exactly. to be speed. Exactly. Uh, in this case, Tuckahoe is the main road in and out of South Tuckahoe. Excuse me. Mel Shark Cherry Drive. Um, and so if there is an opportunity to look at how at the slowing traffic on Tuckahoe will increase so that we can include that as and you know stopping the traffic the speed is going to help but probably increase the traffic on the I mean the speed is going to yeah, I, I definitely understand these concerns. We are, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, perhaps. I see. We are definitely limited in this program to doing a traffic calming project on Tuckahoe Drive only. Um, we. Not not with this project. Um, again, the the way to initiate that process would be applying. And then if speeding does get worse, um, I imagine that it will be selected if if Tuckahoe was. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, we, we we know this is not a yeah please please do Great. Um, that's about all I've got, but I'm here for for any other questions, feedback, ideas, um, whatever you'll think. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, no. So you said it would take about two months for take the feedback to come up with. Thereabouts. Um, it may not be that full two months, but um, just in general terms, that's about what we expect. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And and I may, I'll reach out. We can we can go ahead and get another meeting scheduled before we finish the design, um, and that'll save us a little time as well. Um, any anything else? So going back to the time. Yeah. If you get to the 10 month timeline, I'll just say that's what I got it down for that. That's great. I've seen the timeline. And a lot of that has to be applied and contracted. Yeah. Typical that's correct. There, there's been a, a parade of reasons why the installation of this program has been pretty bogged down. Um, we're optimistic that the current contractor situation is going to result in, in faster performance. Um, so eight to 10 months, I hope, is a conservative estimate, and, and it may be faster, but um, we'll, we'll find out. Um, well, y'all, thank you very much. I'm happy to stick around for more questions, but wanted to plug NDOT's uh, social media, and then this is a QR code to their website um, where they've got information on what we covered here tonight.
All right, I'm going to stop recording. Well, really appreciate you all coming.